Hello everybody, this is John Levine. Hello everybody, this is John Levine. Hello everybody, this is John Levine. Or is this John Levine? Hello everybody. Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm joined today by a very special guest. It's John Levine who played Sergeant Benton in Doctor Who. <laughs> So, uh, we're just going to do a little interview. Well, I would questions. like to do that, Zach. Thank you. Excellent, excellent. Okay, yes, so I've just got a few questions on my phone. Yes. Ask you a bit about your time on Doctor Who. Yes. And everything like that. So, how well did you get on with Patrick Droughton during uh, filming of The Three Doctors? And did Pat seem finding returning to the role easy? Well, you see, I remember I'd been with Pat Droughton um, yeah. as a Yeti and a Cyberman. Yes. <laughs> it always makes me laugh when I say that. So when your agent comes up and says, have you ever been a Yeti? No. You know, he was wonderful because he was caring, um, great actor, he didn't like theatre as I, as you know, he didn't like shouting in the dark. But the reason Pat was so amazing is he blended with the character of the mm. Doctor and he was also friendly, as yes. indeed was with John Pertwee. Yeah. So Pat was just a jolly, happy, very introverted lad, he didn't, uh, he didn't like the show, uh, he didn't like showing off very much. Um, but he, he started making me think, gosh, if that's how nice an actor can be as a leading man, then yeah. that's the kind of person I would like to try and be. Yes, definitely. Masters. Yes. If you could relive one day of filming on Doctor Who <laughs> and being on the cast and crew again, if you can remember, uh, which day would it be and why? Well, first of all, out of the 890,000 days I did, it's got to be on the demons uh, because my love for John Pertwee, my adoration for Roger Delgado, my respect for Nick Courtney as the Brigadier, no one else could have done the uh, rig like Nick. Yeah. Um, Katie Manning, of course, whoever whoever your female lead is, they, you, you're going to be happy. But yeah. Katie was just one of those. I mean, Katie knows if you if you see this, Katie, <laughs> you never know. You may produce something you might need me for later. Katie Manning uh, was an incredible leading lady, but John Pertwee is the man that made my life utterly real because he actually liked me. Yeah, so uh, it would be a day in the demons because um, every day I woke up on that show, I was so happy to be alive. My part was the best I'd ever had. The location was one of the best we'd ever had. So if you were to ask me, but you cannot, Zach, expect anyone in 75 years of life to put it down to a day. Having said that, if I take the whole of the demon shoot, mm -hmm. it was as powerful as the most powerful day in my oh, wow. life. There's your answer. Fantastic. Excellent. That's it. Uh, the demons is one of my personal favorites as well. Yes. I really, really enjoyed. Lovely show. Yeah. What's the nicest thing a fan has ever done for you? Oh gosh, there are too many. Uh, mo most of them, one of the things recently is um, a, a man came up to me in Wales and said, Mr. Levine, he said, I'm not going to say you don't remember me, do you? Because it was 49 or 51 years ago that you changed my life. Now, wow. I've done quite a bit of life changing. I think anyone that's in Doctor Who, Katie Manning, any of us that give and share, not the ones that don't give a damn, but the ones that give and share, and surely that's our job. Am I, am I, call me old fashioned, but isn't our job to let young people like you know that not only is acting the hardest business in the world and the most destructive in one way and the most beautiful in another, um, it's all down to the inner personality, the core of the people you work with. When you have the Pertwees and the Troutons and the Katie Mannings and the Roger Delgados to work with, you're going to have a much better image of things than if you work with people that are angry, mm -hmm. pushing everybody, upsetting the director and yeah. things like that. Now, I'm not very tough. I try and make out I'm a bit bold, but underneath it, when I'm scrutinized by someone who I know is mean and aggressive, like Roger Delgado, I crumble easily because, as Roger said, I have a butterfly soul. <laughs> so underneath this slightly bold exterior, a few of the brave things I've done where I've risked my life for other people, so Zach, yes, um, uh, all in all, um, we'll get ready for your next question, but you've got to remember for me, as a young working class boy with a father at war, that I was in Doctor Who at all, as an extra, and then, uh, at, uh, you know, eight on the, the cast list, I'm still overwhelmed by it. Here in Salisbury in 2016, I love my character in Doctor Who, and I love Doctor Who for what it's done for the world, and for people like me. Your next question, Zach. <laughs> Okay, um, well, yeah, speaking of Roger, Roger Delgado was obviously incredibly loved by the whole team. Now, uh, did you get to spend much time with him outside of the show, and what's your fondest memory? Right. My answer is this. I was given this over 50 years ago, but the trouble is I lost my head. Fame made me lose my head. This is one of the most lovely remembrances I have of Roger. It was made by a young man who was very much into model making, but somewhere between Hollywood and Serum, or I'd like to say Sunset, Ser Sunset Boulevard and Serum, I lost my head. Anyway, we're going to go back now and talk to Zach doing this lovely YouTube interview. 
So, um, what was your question about Roger's act? Um, did you get to spend much time with him outside of filming, and what's your fondest memory of him? Yes, I did get some time to spend with him. He was very private, like most of us, quietly were quite private. I think mainly because we are in the public eye most of the time. Did you want to say something else then? No, no, no. Oh, you looked at you. Okay. Um, and and uh, Roger, um, my time with him was mostly driving home with him, uh, driving home with him sometimes when I had my car and he didn't. But the best times, I'm just my mind is just jogged back to going to dinner in his house in Twickenham. He had a gorgeous little cottage. I imagine it was called something like the White Cottage or Red Roof Paradise, whatever it was. And as you know, he was married to what was regarded as the most beautiful woman in the world. I mean, in England at that time. Her name was Kism Kismet Delgado. And she, uh, many of you older people will remember, she was the uh, poster commercial for Fry's Turkish Delight. That's when she got famous. She was so beautiful, Roger was besotted with her. And um, I remember going to dinner with my first wife then, <clears throat> only been married twice, <clears throat> and we'd go round and he'd have his very expensive red wine. He liked red wine. I never drank, uh, but I did try some, but it was like vinegar to me. But I know Roger enjoyed it. But spending private time with him and hearing about his work on El Cid, which is a big movie he made with Charles Heston, um, was fascinating. And that's when I realized that um, you don't have to be tough and abrasive to be popular or, or, or get work. And it, it was his soft side that I think I was attracted to. He was a very gentle man, dressed well. I, I, I don't dress up these days. Well, I wouldn't. I'm in my own garden now, but I wear my suits. Now, when I do my band, I've got my little band now. It's called Sergeant Benton's Lonely Hearts Club Band, everybody. <laughs> Make sure you buy the album when it comes out in a year's time. Um, so Roger was an utter dream as a human being, as a man full of wisdom, and as a gentle, gorgeous man to work with. And the thing I love the most is when I did a big scene with him and he said, John, you do go a bit over the top with your stunts. I said, Roger, when you don't think you're a very good actor, because remember, you can read it in all the books, I didn't think I had no training, no theater, no voice, no no anything. And there are some actors who most likely say yes and you can see it. Having said that, I ended up being a pretty good background face actor to Doctor Who. My little looks, which I did better than any other walk on, which is why I got the part. All my little expressions where I didn't know I could say words, I think were very precious. So that was it. Roger gave me the faith to go on. He gave me the desire to be friends. So, yeah, so all in all, Roger Delgado, along with John Pertwee and Katie Manning, best thing that ever happened in my life, apart from my children, of course, and the people I love. Yeah, well, that's, that's really That's it. Yeah, bless you. What was it like working with the wonderful John Pertwee? When John Pertwee came along and we first met him as the doctor, and the producer came up and said, This is the new doctor, I suppose I ought to use the real words. I nearly <laughs> myself because John Pertwee was one of my radio heroes from all the radio shows, and the fact that he was Wurzel Gummidge alone was enough to make people like me look up in envy. He walked in, and we were in a TA, and that's a territorial, a territorial army hut, rehearsing, and they said, this is John Pertwee, and I knew in the minute he shook my hand that this was gonna be a lifelong friend. So, the rest really is history. He was the best man I've ever worked with. Some people say he had an ego, I never saw it because when you're the doctor, you've got to be allowed a little, a little width and breadth uh, to be yourself. I thought Paul McGann, by the way, my favourite doctor is definitely David Tennant, Paul McGann. Uh, Paul McGann's the kind of actor that I would like to have been. I met, I was with Paul about a month ago, and he said, "Why did you, I, I?" I told him I just watched With Nail and I, which is a, and he said, "Why do you want to be an?" And I said, "Well, it's your method, the way you do it, the way you." Uh, entertain the character you're in. I just love people that can do that. Very few people do it. Robert De Niro, of course. But anyway, yeah, uh, John Pertwee just came along and brightened my whole life up. He was the father I always dreamed of. He was the driving companion. I had no car. I had no money. I was on 80 pounds a week. Yeah. And I used to pick John up, get the bus to Barnes, drove John's car, pick Katie Manning up. God in heaven, what? how close can you get to paradise? Apart from when I was in Bermuda on the cruise liners and when I saw Machu Picchu in Peru or Machu Picchu, Machu Picchu. And all the places I've seen, the Amazon, I have to say, working with John Pertwee on Doctor Who, as Sergeant Benton, and given that my confidence came, as soon as John took over, he took me aside one day, as indeed Pat Trout, and said, John, there's only one thing you do that not only upsets me, you'll end up losing by it, and I need to tell you. You've got to stop apologizing for not being an actor. And I said, you know, you're right. It's a weakness in all of us. I've noticed a lot of people do it. How did I do in that scene? Big names I've worked with. What did I, how did I do then? You did fine, honestly. What a tough job it is. Yeah. So all in all, John came in and he made me happy. He, he, I don't know, gave me heart. He gave me hope. He gave me friendships and I'd never had that deep. 
He gave me intelligence. He gave me a world of his life. The diving in Crete and Greece, the being on the HMS Hood during the war, sink, trying to sink the Bismarck. How many men do you meet like that? So I drank in every moment I had with Roger and him and Pat Trouton. So look, um, first of all, Zach, thank you very much for being so courteous and right. asking questions yes, I could actually answer. Um, if I may just say to the camera, uh, the camera will just turn to me a little bit as I'm an old pro. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, first of all, uh, people of Zach's age, it's always fascinating to do a little talk to because in all fairness, we all have to start somewhere. But the people like Zach and all of you people that have loved our characters and Doctor Who, fans and enthusiasts and all of the people out there that have made this show last and last and last, I say thank you from the bottom of my heart if ever you see me at a convention, do feel free to come up and just say hello. These days are precious now. I don't know how many I have left. Hopefully quite a few more, but you never really know. So God bless you all, and may your own particular God go with you. Bye-bye. So the other day, I took to Twitter to ask you guys to ask me some questions for my 150 subscriber special video. And now at the time of filming this video, I'm now on 180, which is crazy. Um, 